He is who he is, uh, and he's always been who he is. I think Kimmy's one of a kind, isn't he? He's a character of Formula One, doesn't really care about the outside world, but just enjoys driving. He's got so many fans around the world. He's that kind of guy that is funny without wanting to be funny. Well, Kimmy parties all the time, so... I guess. <laughs> so I first met him at the Japanese Grand Prix in 2001, the end of his first season. I mean, it's, uh, it's incredible to think now because obviously he's, he's the oldest driver in Formula One, but at that time he was young, very young. I just hope that I will get some points for the team. I'm uh, just doing my best all the time. Kim was um, very unexperienced. Um, we cannot recap why we, we give him a chance to test. So this is, this is in, a, in a mystery, even Peter Sauber, he cannot recall why um, we have given him a chance to test in, in Mugello. He was just this uh, guy that was full of energy, had this massive smile, very mischievous. He was just a fun character. But he was very quiet. Obviously, he still is very quiet most of the time, but um, yeah, he just sort of stood there and watched what was going on. 18 years ago, he had no clue about the technical side of a Formula One car. He would drive every car quick. But uh, he had a tendency, even with a lot of fuel in the car, to try and be quickest in qualifying. And so we had a couple of incidents where he went off on his quality lap, the one quality lap you had, because he was trying to beat the guy who was quickest. I don't remember Tyler Alexander. He was control systems engineer, and he just said, you got to tell the kid not to watch quality. And so we, we literally told him he wasn't allowed to watch what was going on in qualifying until he got in the car and he drove out and we said just drive the car to the grip and from that point we didn't have any other issues. You could see in his eyes that he is he's determined to, to achieve something and he was very special. I mean for me when I walked into Formula One not knowing anything, you know I knew him, he was one of the best drivers at the time, still is. Okay it's all over, it's all over, Hamilton 7, Hamilton 7. By my calculations we win the championship by one point. I have to say, I was very happy for him. I saw he was actually staying in our hotel and we, we were in the bar afterwards and he was there with a couple of his mates and uh, gave him the big hug and said, well done mate, you thoroughly deserve that. <laughs> I couldn't think of anybody better to win it. For me, he's always been really good to work with, really easy. He has a very, very good feeling about what, what, what the car is doing, a very precise way of feeling uh, what's going on. I think with the experience over the years, he learned a lot about, about the sport, a lot about the politics. Uh, a lot about the techniques. I think the impression from the outside world is he would be someone that's very difficult, but uh, quite the opposite. On the camera he doesn't look like he's speaking much, uh, but, uh, but he has always been extremely nice with me. He has been, always been uh, also supportive and uh, when, when I lost my father, by example, and uh, these are things that I, that I don't forget. I was the hungry young man coming in and Kimi was the established driver. But I learned a lot from him, uh, just in the way he processed his weekend. It was very good to have him as a teammate. Very straightforward, very easy. He says what he thinks. Okay, Kimi, next car behind you is Alonso. Alonso, five seconds behind you. I'll keep you updated on the gap. I'll keep you updated on the pace. Just let me alone, I know what to do. Okay, Kimi, we need to keep working all four tyres, please. Keep working all yes, four tyres. Yes, 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 yes. I'm doing all the time, so you don't have to remind everything. He'd always been like that on the radio, it's just that it hadn't been broadcast before. So he, he just wasn't a fan of people talking to him on the radio. To be fair, it had been the same with Mika, he didn't want much information either. They, just, they were guys who just got in the car and got on with racing. Wanting to have fun in something with an engine, so whether that's a car, a skidoo, a jet ski, a motocross bike, and it's been the same from the moment I met him to now. Well done, well done my friend. Sorry, hold on. Thank you. Good. It's always nice to, to catch up. I, I ask him about uh, my old team and he's also asking about his old team and it's uh, always good to, to catch up and speak about these things. His mentality of pushing the team, he, he's into every little detail. Um, he's pushing the mechanics, the engineers, so from, from the bottom to the top he's pushing everyone. He's leading the team now. I think a call that meets him is that he doesn't give a shit and that's more true maybe for his young years than now. I think now he cares a little bit more. But deep down, he's the same guy.